Now, what does age do to you? Well, it does three things to you, if you remember. It causes unusual infections, it causes unusual neoplasms, and it involves the central nervous system, the brain. Those are the three things that it does to you. How does it do those three things to you? Well, it ruins your immune system and it attacks what are called T4 sites on lymphocytes and kills them and therefore diminishing your immune response. But worse than that, it can replicate inside lymphocytes and leave the lymphocytes and get into other cells. And because it's a retrovirus and therefore has a transcriptase, it can get into the cellular DNA of other cells. So in the end, you're left with a general infection and not just of T lymphocytes. Now, people have worked out the sort of things that happen if you have a risk of AIDS. And as I said to you, there, you could be HIV positive and there are 80 to 100,000 people in the United Kingdom alone that are HIV positive. You may therefore be HIV positive and you may be a healthy carrier and you may be a healthy carrier forever and that's the end of it. And there may be no problems at all. Some of them will have an acute illness like glandular fever and I stressed that to you when I was talking to you about glandular fever. Some of them will have a thing called persistent generalized lymphadenopathy. In other words, they have generalized enlargement of the lymph nodes. And that may be the only feature that they have and they may continue and be healthy forever after that. Some of them have a thing called AIDS-related complex. In other words, they have a series of minor infections. You need not worry about these things. What it amounts to is that if you have AIDS, you may be well. If you have AIDS, you may teeter on the borders with lymph nodes. If you have AIDS, you may have a series of minor infections, but unfortunately, between 10 and 100%, and it varies from studies to studies and series to series, but we can safely say, it's be reasonable to say, that 30% of them will go on to develop AIDS and will therefore develop unusual infections, unusual neoplasms, and the involvement of the central nervous system. Now, what is your role within this? A budding dentist, a budding dental student, a GP, or even a GDP. So if someone sits in your dental chair, a variety of things may come your way. And you may therefore see severe herpes simplex infection of the mouth with vesiculation and ulceration. You may see angular colitis. You may see thrush caused by candida albicans and no ordinary to ordinary thrush, which you have seen underneath dentures of elderly patients. But if you see a young person with thrush, apart from thinking of diabetes, Apart from thinking of antibiotics, you should also think of AIDS. That thrush sometimes goes well past the tongue into the oesophagus and you see this cobblestone appearance and you can see the white lesions and if you try to remove that, it would leave an ulcerated surface, a bleeding surface. These patients are prone to other infections, so you wouldn't be surprised if they had hepatitis, hepatitis B. And in that case, you wouldn't be surprised if they were jaundice. And if they were, you would put them on the good light, depress the lower eyelid, and check the sclera, and make sure that they are jaundice. Some of these patients will have an acute illness, like glandular fever, which I stressed that to you earlier on. And some of them will have lymphadenopathy. Some, sometimes that lymphadenopathy becomes malignant. So you get malignant tumors of the lymph nodes, and that is called lymphoma. But the most important thing that you would see is a thing called Kaposi's sarcoma, which is a very vascular tumor, and I will come back to you in a minute.